It's kind of hard to believe sometimes when I think of 12 pregnancies, one, one set of twins, especially now that I have older children. I feel like they're my friends in a way. I love being with them, talking to them. <laughs> There's always someone, someone under my arm. It's, it's joyful. We were having more than just one child or two children or three children. And that was one of the big, you know, head scratchers. Like, how can you afford that? We never really allowed ourselves to take that into to put a price tag on a child. I've learned not to be selfish. I mean, you can't really be selfish in a big family. It's hard to. You realize that life is not centered around yourself. <laughs> and there's other people besides yourself. We give our children a lot of responsibility. They start helping at a young age and helping their mama in the kitchen, in the house, babysitting, taking care of them. Maybe it's always hectic, but not for a second I wanted fewer children. It's always been just a blessing. With you. Just take my hand with you Just take my hand and fly up through the dreams Where the skies are so clear With you I don't know if we actually planned anything, really, except that we both knew that we wanted to have as many kids as God wanted us to have. We didn't know what that number would be, if it'd be one, none, or 15. And that might still happen, I don't know. <laughs> but we um, we just were open, both of us, you know, truly, really open to whatever God had in store for us. We were gonna live a life that was conducive to raising a lot of children and just ask God if it's His will that he, he do it and that he give us the grace and the means to be able to raise them in a place that would lead them to Christ. Nick is a, a strong leader, simple, um, very clear-cut, strong faith. I knew pretty much right away he was a country boy. I was attracted to that. He works harder than anybody, but he also expects everyone to work. Loves the children. He spends every second with them in his work on the farm. All the things that he loves, his hunting, his everything he does, he includes the children. He brings them along. When I met Nick, I pretty much knew that I couldn't walk away because I was so drawn to him and his high ideals, the life he wanted to live. And I felt that being with him, marrying him, I would be able to live the kind of radical life that I thought God wanted me to. Hey Grace. As long as I can remember, I wanted to, to get married at a young age, have a large family, and live on a farm. And I met my wife uh, during orientation week, my freshman year of college, and we were pretty much dating by the end of that week. I never had any discernment troubles and trying to figure out what to do. She's really a rock in the family. I would like to think it's me that's the rock, but it's not. She's so steady. And but the, I think the greatest thing is she supports me. A hundred percent. I mean, she gets the children behind me, she's behind me, she helps me to do that and supports that role that I have and, and even gets the children to see that role and respect it. And I, don't think, I think that's one of the greatest things that she does. She prays uh, the rosary every morning with them. Uh, I wake up the boys early and we, we'll say the breviary together before they go out and do the chores, feed the animals.
Our oldest Maggie is 19. She's very uh, strong will and ready to tackle anything. She's also very, probably one of my most faithful. She was just the perfect age when I had my twins. There was two mamas in this house. I was one and Maggie was the other. And we held those babies all day long. And Lucy is 18. She's such a good girl, man. She's real solid. When she gets married, the lucky husband will be, fine. she's gonna be the rock. She's gonna be the, the anchor in the relationship. Rosie is next, big heart. She's the one that Funny. would crack the joke in a serious moment, yeah. and then everyone will lighten up. Yeah. Thomas is the oldest boy, big helper. He's and dependable. He's already passing me up on mechanics and uh, <laughs> hunting. He tries not to act like he knows more, but sometimes he'll call Nick. <laughs> he'll catch me doing stuff wrong and have to correct me. <laughs> Isidore's 13. He's got a big heart, too, and passionate. He's also very funny. Those passions directed the right way are going to be very good. Eliza's 11. She is kind of the boss of the next crew, younger children. And she's very, very imaginative. She creates games for all those little children, directs them, bosses them. Susie is uh, just turned 11. She likes to read. She's a little more quiet. Mm, yeah. She likes animals a lot, too. And Bonnie is eight. And she is a little bit of a wildflower. <laughs> I mean, she's learning to be a little more filtered, but a lot of times she'll be the one to say something that everyone is. And then Jimmy and Henry twins. are the twins. They are six. Coming to know them a little better this year. They, they love the boys. They follow Tom Snizdor around everywhere. And then Norma Jean, she has to let Ida get her way all the time. So she's learning to be selfless, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and Ida's real, she's the two-year-old who's very loud and demands attention and demands everything. And everybody gives it to her. That's a good baby. Sarah. <laughs> really good baby. There's a good baby. That should be me. And Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Bless us, so we're going to a really nice little parish, real country parish. My, the boys are the kind of the main altar servers there. My daughters have always been the choir that's run by my sister. They they enjoy it. And just the fact that, you know, we, we try to encourage vocations and the priesthood and talk to the boys, you know, it's kind of the, we think the first, maybe the first step to just being up close and personal to it and serving at the altar is, is a pretty big gift. Being about in a big family is, there's so much love in the family and you're never, never bored of doing things, always lots to do and so much company. I am the primary homeschooler in this family. But I, again, I, as intimidating and as hard as it sounds to homeschool so many, you know, from 12th grade to kindergarten and pre-kindergarten, God gives, has given me so many resources, so, so much help. My mother who lives next door does reading lessons with the reading age children, which is usually, um, I have a lot of high school resources um, just from online to co-op um, type classes. I just feel like from year to year, God opens things up and trusting Him hasn't failed yet. Start helping at a young age and, and uh, helping their mama in the kitchen, in the house, with babysitting, taking care of them. Maybe it's always hectic, but it's really gotten easier and, and more and more joyful. They, watching the children help each other and take care of each other, and not for a second I wanted fewer children. It's always been just a blessing. It's funny when people say, I can't believe you have 13 children. 
I don't feel like I've climbed any mountains or anything. I just feel like it's what God's given us to do, and He gives us the grace to do it every day. We actually put most of our money in, in the farm, and I think that keeps us kind of where we want to be. Um, when they get older, if they want to spend money on those on certain things, that's, that's no problem. But we just haven't spent a lot of money on individual things. It's just been we put money in the farm and the animals, and the children see that instead of their personal gadgets, really. We put ourselves in this on this land for that reason to help us because I mean it's all right here before us you know just the thankfulness of God's creation right here everything they do is in God's I mean what he gave us his creation and it's it just keeps you kind of simple and pure the children will feed the cows which, you know with grain hay move the cows around a lot work the cows yeah I spend pretty much all my time besides doing school outside with all the animals feed them and ride horses. I don't know what I would do without animals. Well, during the calving season, there's a lot to do with calves being born, checking on them every day, make sure everything's doing well. So these boys drive all the tractors and equipment, and they they do all that every morning. And then the, for the girls, the big one is um, two milk cows that they milk every morning and night. And then the little ones just they take care of the chickens, the pigs, and turtles, rabbits. They usually just ride with anybody who's driving something fun. Yeah. That's their job. <laughs> Did you bash her really good? The older ones they take a lot of your personal attention. They take a lot of my <laughs> personal attention. And then... The they ask for it. They get in there and, and yeah. they need yeah. it. Then the little ones, they're just... They're just physically needy. And they're fun, though. I mean, they're, yeah. I mean, they're all the children are fun. Don't get me wrong. But, but, you know, the little ones play the new... They get their new tricks and they play and they laugh and clap for the first time. And all the children give them attention. They get so much attention, it's crazy. Yeah, but there's a little group in the middle, like before they start working with me or you in the garden, take them on a little trip with them. This, it. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the challenges, I think, are just trying to live in society that is not geared towards big families and living in the world and being part of it, still having your children part of sports and part of um, just community life in general. Most people have one or two children and they act a certain way because of it. And we have lots of children and kind of have to overcome some stigmas of, you know, what big unruly families or children are like and, and kind of try to mesh with society without being worldly. The way I see it and, and uh, understand it is, is God's given you that authority. I have been given that by God for my children to lead them, to teach them, but especially at a young age where they don't know Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I really feel like the Father needs to, in a tiny little way, fill that role of God the Father. Having them be disciplined having authority over them, uh, making them realize that there are consequences if they don't behave. My real authority is God. And so they have respect, love, discipline, these things that are directed at God all of a sudden instead of the Father. It's a, tr a handoff. And all of a sudden, you have a teenage child that's, holy smokes, he's genuflecting because they want to, and they're kneeling down in front of the tabernacle because they want to, because they have a love and a respect that I think I gave them. Well, God gave them through me. Or I acted, when they were very young. When they were young. Yeah. If you don't teach a child to be respectful and 
understand they're going to have a, some punishment if they misbehave. But also they love that authority because they need order. It's also a part of, of them feeling not just kind of coddled and, you know, pat on the head, get out of the way. And they actually, we need them to do certain things and they, they're needed and they, they have to fulfill this role. And they, sometimes it's hard, sometimes they fail and sometimes they're disciplined and, but they want to do it. They get right back up and they, they come running back. And Nick is always right there with them. thing is we just try to instill a real thankfulness in them. A new calf is born on the farm. You know, direct their minds for a minute to God, let them know that that's where that came from. We should be thankful for that. And just our nighttime prayers kind of try to fill it with being thankful for the protection he gave us, for the brothers and sisters, for the land that we have, the farm we have. And just before long, it kind of becomes a continual thankfulness. And I hope that in their mind, that's the first thing they turn to, to just give thanks. I think the best part about it too is that it's like an investment. Every moment, everything you put into these children, you are gonna get it back. Just keep giving them your time, your love, then it's going to come back. We're the Wingate family. We are. Joy